Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. And or if this, this is your first time, this is the eighth and final session of the GOAT series, Yomu Jihua. And today we have very special guests because um, they may not be dancers or choreographers, but that they're still very much related to the arts. And we have Julia Due Stefanen from Denmark with us and um, Moritz Spark from Germany today. Hi, would you like to say hello to our audience? Hello. Everyone. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Yes. Very nice to be here. Yeah, welcome. And I'm uh, Yatin Lin from Taipei National University of the Arts. And today we have um, interesting combination, if I may say so, because uh, Julia has a background in photography, digital arts and communication. And she used to work and live in the capital, Copenhagen for many years, but decided to move back to her hometown, Horsens, which is a smaller city, smaller town, and build her own space, a cafe, which is uh, integrating um, many arts related events. And um, whereas Moritz, who is from Germany, um, he also was educated in Israel as well and is now not only a um, music instructor in various schools, but also a composer, sound designer, and also has his own um, website <laughs> with um, building his own um, business career on the side. So this is kind of one of the um, topics we'll be um, trying to focus today about how artists that can maybe, you know, uh, grow into uh, related careers paths that are not just um, performing artists or visual artists, but how you expand into the so-called cultural creative industries, yeah? So um, maybe we can start with uh, Julia. Would you like to introduce your very unique cafe space to us? Yes. What is it called? And Yes, and what is called? So uh, as just mentioned, what I do at the moment is that I have this cafe in a, a small mm -hmm. town called Horsens in Denmark. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is very true that I first, before I opened the cafe, I did study mm -hmm. uh, communication and I worked mm -hmm. in the fashion field in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. After a while there, uh, life happened and I did feel that I was not at the right place. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I did, I went home. And mm -hmm. for many of my friends, they more have the needs when they want to create, they go to the bigger cities. And mm -hmm. I do understand why, but mm -hmm. I did find like the, it very interesting to kind of uh, see what we can do in a smaller town and a smaller mm -hmm. village. Mm -hmm. So I went back home and then mm -hmm. I did start to uh, research a lot because mm -hmm. uh, that was, always what we have to do to find a, mm -hmm. the right needs and then to mm -hmm. create from there mm -hmm. and uh, my cafe it is a mm -hmm. cafe mm -hmm. but it's not um, and it's maybe it's a concept that i did also meet in uh, the bigger cities mm -hmm. it contains of course a very nice cup of coffee and, food <laughs> and so on but it's do also uh, have uh, the space for people to uh, come join with their computers and work together, mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. meetings, do all this uh, innovation mm -hmm. lab. Mm -hmm. And this might, if you have been in uh, yeah, Berlin or New York mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. Copenhagen, like mm -hmm. these cafes are all over. But mm -hmm. for my hometown, it was new. Like mm. they only have the cafes where you eat the hamburgers and, <laughs> and get the cakes. And it's very nice. I do like those cafes. Mm -hmm. But what I did just see the needs was to have this open mm -hmm. space. And it's mm -hmm. so interesting to, mm -hmm. for me, it was a normal thing that you could mm -hmm. take your computer to a cafe, but mm -hmm. to just have that smaller thing adapted mm -hmm. into uh, this smaller town, uh, mm -hmm. it's not as easy as I thought. <laughs> so that is kind of the, the one thing is to have mm -hmm. this more uh, computer uh, cafe room. And then the other part is a, a cultural stage, uh, like an event place where you can come and you can have all these stuff that you want to show people, 
but you are maybe not a professional or you don't know where to start. Maybe you have this uh, idea for a concept, but is does it work? Are people interesting? Then people can come and test it. That can, for example, be, I want to make this concept about people getting to reuse their clothes more. Mm. Uh, can I get something about that? Mm -hmm. Then this girl, she starts to have like different like events uh, for yeah maybe one uh, every month and okay mm -hmm. people are starting to come they come again and again and now she have a, a yeah a company out of that or it mm -hmm. can be uh, yeah a person that she is starting to be a coach and then hey julia mm -hmm. can i come and i do have a lot of coaches uh, coaches so oh. coaches for yes. for for, oh, for what kind of stuff Really? Uh, yes, yes, that is big. That is big. Uh, I don't know if it's only in Denmark, but it's very popular at the moment mm. and important also. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be uh, yesterday we had the drag queen Bango. <laughs> uh, I don't know Bango in English. It's a, like a game. Bango, it's a board game where you, oh. if you have the right numbers, you win. And mm -hmm. then it's a drag. Oh, like bingo. Yes, bingo. Like bingo. Yes, yes, oh, okay. yes, exactly. Bingo, bango, yeah. Uh -huh. And then it's a drag queen. And uh -huh. this to take you know to show this smaller village like uh, mm -hmm. about drag queen and all this i find it very in important mm -hmm. so yes that is all this kind of stuff you can go to our website or mm -hmm. i do mm -hmm. like instagram mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and that is also due to my uh, future where i did study photography and communication but uh, that is what we do um, and the place is called gross And gros is, uh, it means two things. Like if you say gros in Danish, it means uh, like it's small rocks uh, and sand, like mm -hmm. this material. So it's like, like gravel. Very... Mm -hmm. Exactly. Thank you. That's the <laughs> word in English. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a very dynamic material and mm -hmm. it's very like on, you know, not, uh, yeah, it's, it's on ground, you know, people mm -hmm. can easily attach to it. It mm -hmm. doesn't try to be something that it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, but this dynamic uh, kind of uh, values, it's, it's what we are about the concept. Like what are the needs at the moment? How, uh, how can we adapt that? And how can we uh, help people to create yeah, a mm -hmm. place that follows? So we are not, now this is how we do. For example, maybe next year we do something else. Maybe it's not the computer space and this, cultural states that are mm -hmm. the needs maybe it's mm -hmm. something else and then because it's not a it's not a big uh, company so we can easier like change the the little things um and that i find very very uh, valuable at the mm -hmm. first i was trying to find investors and stuff that could pay us for this you know because it was such a good idea but they all did say no <laughs> I, you know because how can you uh, yeah make money out of selling coffee and all that stuff But now I do find it as one of our biggest strengths because then it's easier for us to change. Mm. But what I also learned now, we did just, uh, we are just one year old, uh, the first of November, uh, we had our first birthday. And the first year did really teach me like how fast can you adapt and make these changes and how slow can you, you know, because I have it all in my head, but also we really do need to, take it slower to make people to have the trust in the project because mm -hmm. when you as an artist or a cafe owner or what else you do like if you don't have the trust and from the people then they don't are willing you know to uh, engage and and put their heart in it so this is what i really do work a lot on you know to create this trust to the new things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah and uh Then it's I, just actually maybe we can share the website now would, th would that be a good uh, moment or the instagram yeah yeah mm -hmm. if we go it's coming in the chat right uh do you need to refer it to do you need to refer to it in the zoom or no, or no? it's okay yeah people can just okay can have a look. okay um okay. but at the website you can see we both have the menu for the food and we also mm -hmm. have this calendar And mm -hmm. it's very nice to see that now we are one year old and people are still just coming and say, hey, Julie, could we make this event or I would like to do this? So mm -hmm. some of the events I do come up with, but mainly it's uh, people or yeah, uh, 
uh, local people that come and say, hey, can we do this? And I find it so interesting that the needs really are there that for sure, like towns and all the mayors and all stuff, they want to have these uh, engaged, uh, like people living in their city, but to see how big the needs are, they did just mm -hmm. need a place to go, you know, mm -hmm, to give that mm -hmm. energy. It's so powerful. Um, and also, I really find it interesting to have a place before you go professional, but that mm. you are still uh, accepted and that you are on a part of the journey. Uh, mm -hmm. And that journey is accepted where you are at the moment. Also me, for example, I did not, uh, you know, I'm not educated in being a chef or have a cafe, but what I just did was, okay, I need something so people go in here. And I was thinking, okay, coffee and cafe latte is a good way for that. And then I started, but I did make so bad coffees in the beginning and the food and all that, you know, oh my God, it was, it was really bad. <laughs> but now slowly I'm learning and that is just, you know, what I really, it's so important to just start as long as you just start and begin somewhere mm -hmm. and then be, you know, knowing that you are going to make a lot of mistakes and then just be patient, like mm -hmm. really just be patient. So that is what I'm trying to do with goals. You know, it's changed. For example, also in the beginning, now it's named, it names Groos is kind of like the, the main name for it. But then I had to put like an add-on for making the website and stuff. So first I had Groos culture, mm -hmm. but now what you can see on Instagram is mean, and also the website is Groos city. And that mm -hmm. I did change first, you know, it's uh, two months ago um so like it it started to be named goose culture because it was with all this event and to collect people together but i found out that i had to change the name because people when it was named culture people were like then i can come here free i can i don't have to buy the coffee mm -hmm. all that vibe was about the culture because but it's culture so you make it just because you like it and then mm -hmm. Yes, but I also had to explain, yes, but it's also have to be like a healthy economic company because I need employee yeah. mans. Mm -hmm. I have to, uh, you know, I want to develop this uh, and that mm -hmm. is not free. But so I did have to, I, I, I thought that I could keep saying culture, that culture mm -hmm. and economics still can go apart. <laughs> but I found it too hard for me. Like I, I really, really, really fight it, you know, to keep it. Uh, but then I decided to name it City instead because that is more we eat, we create, we do all that stuff mm -hmm. in the, yeah. Um, but that is also one learning and one, for me it was, you know, I had all the, the signs on the windows and all around, you know, I had to change everything. Like it was, mm -hmm. uh, it was a big job, but uh, I really, so that is, uh, it's been like a big learning for me as well to mm -hmm. uh, that, that the big mistakes or what you call it learnings uh, mm -hmm. they are happening and that is just a part of a part of it mm -hmm. yeah so that is kind of where uh, the project is at the moment um we do collaborate a lot of course with the local people but also for example now with you guys and people from uh, around uh, around the denmark and and the world um mm -hmm. i found it very very interesting to kind of create the energy and collect it in this small village mm -hmm. or yeah, town. But we do also have to be yeah open for, for the new and, and what is going on out yeah mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the whole world. And that balance mm -hmm. is still interesting because how I still find it very important to be respectful and honest to like the background in the city, you know, in Horsens and to understand the people that live there, but also mm -hmm. still to push it a bit and that mm -hmm. balance is also how modern should we go and how like should we also stay uh, respectful to the old and that is also a, a very interesting balance mm -hmm. um, yeah great thank you that kind of at least gives us a broad overview of what your cafe um, encompasses for now and a bit of it, it's kind of um progress through the year yeah some adapt adaptation you had to go through yes okay 
and maybe in the meanwhile we can uh, welcome Moritz to share your work as well and we can have more questions after yeah so please Moritz yeah. tell us all right yeah thank you so um my name is Moritz Bad. I'm a musician and a music teacher and sound designer from Germany and yeah I'm just going to briefly tell you a little bit about my my background and my way so far because it's a it's a it's a journey that is still going on and by no means uh, arrived at some place you know where I think okay that's what I'm going to do for the rest of my mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. so I I started to after school I didn't really know what what I want to learn what to want to study so I started uh, to study physics and that turned out to be a great mistake after like two weeks I knew that's not going to be it physics and then yeah. yeah physics it's just really not for me <laughs> but I I just started something and uh, I realized it's not and then um, by after after quitting these studies and not studying for a while, I mm -hmm. realized okay, the thing that I spent most of my free time with is actually music. I was playing in in some youth mm -hmm. orchestras at that time. I was playing mm -hmm. the trumpet, and yeah, mm -hmm. I really did that on my own time. So I realized mm -hmm. okay, maybe I should learn something with music, mm -hmm. which was a thought that I didn't really think about before because I also always thought uh, to study music you have to be so good you have mm. to be almost professional already when you just enter university so I, I thought okay I'm not good enough <laughs> anyway I decided okay I want to learn music so I went to on to study music education and then um, changed my place uh, to another university where I thought I can learn more after a few years into that and yeah and then I was going to become a music teacher which is a very in, in Germany a very specific um, also the, the studies are very specific already towards teaching but then I thought okay I want to uh, maybe try something else with music uh, maybe somewhere out of Germany so I, I didn't just become a teacher in Germany I, I, I went on the web and did some research and I found this program that uh, was taking place in Israel mm -hmm. which was a, a music studies connected with um, getting to know the country language classes and all that and I was very uh, intrigued by, by getting to know mm -hmm. special country Israel a little more so I, I, I signed up for that program and so I came to Israel to study music and I thought okay I already studied in Germany music so um, I already know what's, what's coming but then um, yeah it was a totally different experience Israel is, is such an interesting place and, and, and so different to Germany also from the from the background from the culture mm -hmm. um so yeah my music studies in israel were um a great enrichment mm -hmm. um just to see how how different the approach is and how different people grow up mm -hmm. with music and musicians mm -hmm. where, where they come from who become musicians in israel um and then i yeah i enjoyed this very much so i stayed for another year so i stayed for two years in israel mm -hmm. And then I had the feeling I have to come back home and um, yeah, and kind of incorporate from what I learned in Israel to my, uh, to my work in Germany. Mm -hmm. So I did that and then I started to teach because just mm -hmm. coming back, I didn't really still know what am I gonna do? I mean, in the meantime in Israel, I, I played in a lot of bands Mm -hmm. like some blues and jazz uh, combos and I also played in, in classical orchestras which is something I always like try to do on the side at least because of the classical music is really my where my my main connection is my cultural mm -hmm. musical background mm -hmm. and yeah but I, I did a lot of things in, in this time in Israel and when I came back I just it happened that I, I got a teaching job in a school Mm -hmm. just out of necessity they needed a teacher urgently so I just started mm -hmm. jumped right in and started to teach music mm -hmm. and I did that and then I met my future wife and then she got a job in another city so I, I moved away with her to this other city and then in this new city I was um, on my own I had to find work for myself so I started to find like freelance jobs here and there teaching music and then I also started to get uh, opportunities to work in the theater because mm -hmm. um, my wife is, is a, in the theater she's a dancer so mm -hmm. I am um, 
yeah, I started to col collaborate with the, some of the productions they did in the theater and I started to do the, the sound design for, uh, mm -hmm. for dance pieces. And this was something I totally like learned on my own. I mean, I had the, the musical background, but I, I just got into programming music or um, creating music on the computer or editing music really and um, started to do that a little bit. And uh, I did some projects there that was really uh, interesting and new experience to me. Mm -hmm. And then I also got some jobs in other theaters where I did um, music for plays, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the theater drama, you mean? Plays. Drama, exactly. Mm -hmm. Where they, but each of these projects were very um, unique because everyone has different needs. Every choreographer has different ideas from mm -hmm. of what they want in their piece or or the director of a drama has some ideas he wants specific music because of something so um yeah that was something i really enjoyed doing because it's so different each time and it's a new experience mm -hmm. and yeah and then now i came we moved my wife and i we moved back to, to munich mm -hmm. where i started uh, again teaching in schools but now when I teach in school, I focus mainly on uh, ensemble work. So I conduct the school orchestras or I lead the bands in schools, which is something I... School like meaning like a work. high school or... High school, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, and on the side also, I also teach in music schools where people come, like kids come after school and learn oh. their instruments. So I, I teach piano and trumpet. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and now I'm also at the point where I thought, okay, just doing that teaching in school is not is not enough. Mm -hmm, it's not mm -hmm. um, hundred percent what I want to spend my time with. So, mm -hmm. um, although I I do enjoy it, I want to do something that is uh, really a bit more connected to my own um, passion in music. Mm -hmm. And my my great passion is uh, is really the the orchestral classical music mm -hmm. so um yeah i'm in the process of of uh, founding an an orchestra space mm -hmm. uh, at first i thought it's gonna be a, just a youth orchestra like there are plenty in germany mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, i started to 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 find people to do this with me and then there's this thing that you can't need to most youth orchestras are organized in a certain way in germany Mm -hmm. that you have a, it's sort of a charitable organization something like mm -hmm. that is a bit connotated with um, free you know it's it's usually for free mm -hmm. uh, it's not in order to it's not a business as opposed to a business it's not to make money it's not commercial mm -hmm. so it's something to contribute to society like non-profit uh, nice, yeah exactly non -profit yeah that's some that's a mm -hmm. good translation yeah mm -hmm. it, it, it shouldn't be profitable mm -hmm. so um i went in this direction at first mm -hmm. and then um yeah the the more we were getting on with it i i realized it's it's already so fixed the whole set of rules about it because you mm -hmm. found it in a certain way as a non-profit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and then there's a whole bunch of rules connected to it that kind of give you a corset if you will something like uh -huh. already very specific and um, mm -hmm. and I realized maybe this is kind of too 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 much limiting to me because um, I don't know where exactly this is going. Mm -hmm. So I I decided uh, just this summer to to not go further down that road, but mm -hmm. to to change the whole project, not do it as a nonprofit. Uh, the thing is when you when you do it in the normal way, you get also benefits. You don't uh, you can. Get fund. You can get easier funding. You can get it tax-free stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But still, you have to abide by a whole set of rules about this organizational um, structure. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and and one of the rules is also that this form of organization is not. Um, it, it can change the the head. Can be, is being elected. It's a sort of a democratic institution. Mm which is totally fine, but I thought I want to really have my own thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, somehow I, I, I don't want to fit into this specific form of organization. Mm -hmm. So I, I um, went in another direction and now I'm really 
pounding my orchestra mm-hmm. bass mm-hmm. Uh, just without any um, institutionalized form at the mm-hmm. moment. So I'm just really, and I made this website and I call it now um, Orchestra Werkstatt, which means mm-hmm. the orchestra workshop, something like this, like a place where you can build things, where you can invent mm-hmm. things, where you can try out stuff. Um, because I don't just want to, you know, play in an orchestra or, or conduct an orchestra. I want the people who come and join that they mm-hmm. also take part and that they try out things. For example, mm-hmm. that they don't only uh, play, of course, this is part of it, but they also maybe try conducting a piece mm-hmm. for once. Stand mm-hmm. in front of the, the group and, and try to, to lead it, you know, as mm-hmm. being the director. Mm-hmm. or that they bring a, a song or some music that they like and we sit down together and we arrange it for our specific uh-huh. mm-hmm. instrumentation mm-hmm. and yeah so that we can really try out things and so, everyone to really become involved in a, in a in a creative way if you will maybe we can uh share the website with our uh, audience members at this point we can have our staff do that and um do you want to continue introducing it more or, I mean, because it's both a physical space, right? And also a, a website that you're going to launch for people yeah, exactly. to, to um, be more familiar with what you can offer or what, what is possible. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so I have this website that I made uh, in the summer. Mm-hmm. It's called orchesterwerkstatt.de. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, the whole website is uh, in German because it's kind of a local project it's here in Munich and yeah, I want mm-hmm. to yeah make mm-hmm. people come like people from the area mm-hmm. um, it should be a physical not mm-hmm. a online thing like eventually. so around like how big is the space I mean can you describe it a little bit like is it in a building like no or yeah what? so the thing is I I made the website without really having a space I just uh, had the ah, idea I see. and I wrote down uh, my concept and I mm-hmm. kind of introduced myself on the website and I made the website mm-hmm. and then I started to to look for for places ah, okay. and then I was in in in, in uh, and I found a place that mm-hmm. was nice but mm-hmm. now we are in in the middle in the midst of a, another lockdown <laughs> in Germany and mm-hmm. I, I, we're not allowed to meet uh, so, ah. so I can't really um I couldn't start with this project. So it's still uh, on hold for in, now. In, exactly. It was okay. due to start in Got November. It. And now I'm waiting mm-hmm. for uh, probably in spring. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm aiming mm-hmm. towards March to really mm-hmm. um, yeah, to really start it. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, mm-hmm. yeah, I have the website and I, I'm, I have a place. And this is just, you know, mm-hmm. the, the space itself is just a bigger room, like mm-hmm. a, a room that's big enough mm-hmm. to hold maybe 20 or 30 people. Mm-hmm. and has, mm-hmm. a, mm-hmm. has a good acoustic features so we can mm-hmm. um, make music together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So actually you were also uh, collaborating with some of the artists we uh, spoke to earlier this month, like uh, Adi, right? From uh, exactly, Israel yeah. and... and uh, mm-hmm. That's true, yeah. I did the sound design for two of, of Adi Salan's um, mm-hmm. choreography. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yeah, this was also a collaboration that just happened um, by chance, really, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I was living in, in Gerlitz at that time, and she came to Gerlitz to choreograph a piece for the theater. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she had um, ideas about the music, but she didn't know how to, to really <laughs> do it. Mm-hmm. So she was just mm-hmm. kind of asking her around, and we were sitting together, and I said, oh, you know, I know a little bit about this um, uh, on the computer, Mm-hmm. I have the software and um, maybe I can help you with this. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. we started to work together and um, mm-hmm. yeah, and it became quite a fruitful collaboration because we really, yeah, sometimes it just happens, right? You, you work on something together and it really, mm-hmm. um, it's really inspiring for both sides. And mm-hmm. I had the feeling that it was exactly like that. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and by doing that, I, I learned more about it really. I wasn't... Uh, considering myself a composer until then mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Um, yeah with her also most most of, of the time it's not really that I, I, I sit and I write music mm-hmm. like I compose but mm-hmm. Adi usually has pieces in her mind mm-hmm. and that she wants to have in her in her in her dance piece mm-hmm. but she's not um, yeah and then you can't just take the piece I mean you can but it's 
usually not 100% fitting to what you want. Mm -hmm. like you can take a song that's ready and to dance to it, okay, that's fine. But then you still um, usually you have a, a broader image of what your mm -hmm. dance piece should be like. And then you mm -hmm. need different music and then you need to con connect them. And then you can mm -hmm. maybe, you want to change them a bit. There are some uh, things in the music that you don't like mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. other things that you're missing that you want. So that's exactly mm -hmm. what, what we did most of the time. We really played mm -hmm. with the music mm -hmm. that she brought and, mm -hmm. and, and changed it and, and um, connected, arranged it in, in ways that, um, yeah, at the end of it, it's something that really it fits to that particular dance choreography. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, um, so it's a pity that because this year the COVID-19 um, kind of postponed your uh, projects uh, opening, but um, hopefully maybe gives you more time to prepare and work out the details. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe yes, it's a exactly, good thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I know. I don't know. It's a good and a bad thing at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh -huh. uh, what I feel is that starting your own project like this Orchestra Werkstatt is really the first time I'm really starting my mm -hmm. own thing that is not connected to a to a theater or anything else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's my own idea, my own project. Mm -hmm. um, I feel a, a, a very big um, amount of of fear that is connected to mm -hmm. this. You know, mm -hmm. I realized, wow, there's a reason why I didn't do this until now, something like <laughs> that. Uh, and it's exactly that, because I'm, uh -huh. I'm afraid of it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, I'm afraid yeah. to put myself out there to, to you know, that people will not will not mm -hmm. take it. Mm -hmm. They will not be accepted or people will not mm -hmm. be interested in it. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely it that, takes a this, lot of courage. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least at least for me, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think some other people too, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's always connected to a certain amount, I think, of fear that you have to overcome and mm -hmm. just to start, like mm -hmm. Julie just said, you know, you just have to start, even if you don't know how to make good coffee yet, <laughs> you will learn it on the way, yeah. But it's very uh -huh. hard. Yeah. yeah, you may fall and you may get hurt, right, but... Mm -hmm. People, they are always good at judging. <laughs> You know, it's ah, easier. judging. Easier. Yeah, judging, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's so easy to think uh, there's mm -hmm. so many people who can do good coffee yet or, or, or they, who can do it better than me. And the same as in mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. And there's so much good, whatever, conductors or so mm -hmm. that, um, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's hard to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but once you do it, it yeah, you exactly. I'm right now, in the middle. You know, you and this COVID was just, postponing it <laughs> um so yeah i think it would help me to not have the covid and just really have started already <laughs> but it's gonna end at some point uh, mm -hmm. we all hope and yeah and then i'm gonna start with the project i really uh, mm -hmm. set the date and then just do it mm -hmm. and um i think it has a, a magic to it also because it's something that is connected to myself, it came out of me. And this is with all art, right? You, you, you mm -hmm. create out of yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, that in itself has, has a, an authenticity, uh, mm -hmm. something that resonates within other people. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. there's something of, your, of yourself. And that's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what mm -hmm. art is all about. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Right. So in other words, you want to um, broaden or expand from just teaching, but sharing your passion for like conducting for classical music orchestra and trying to um, invite more people to join you in this. Um, it's not just yeah. a hobby anymore. It's more like a, maybe a profession and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. Because this um, experience that I had when I grew up and I just mm -hmm. played in, in youth orchestras. Mm -hmm. They were some of these experiences were so strong that they, you know, they mm -hmm. stayed in me. They accompanied me throughout my my whole journey. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, still today, they are so alive in me. I really mm -hmm. feel that, that. So I want to create that power that you can when mm -hmm. you when you play music in a group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In this case, the classical music. It doesn't have to be just that, but it can be a, a big band or a, a band or but 
in my case, the, the classical music, mm -hmm. you can create such power by playing mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. um, that is just tremendous. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I want to, to create that mm -hmm. experience mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. for others and to, to, mm -hmm. yeah, to experience it, to share it. Yeah, and that's definitely something not possible to do like via Zoom or, you know, where all of us are in our own spaces and just joining online, right? It's a different kind of a human contact. And, it's really not. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's really not. It's amazing how much is possible mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. For example, you can teach an instrument online that works pretty, pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, to my surprise as well, because I didn't do it until this year, but now mm -hmm. I know it, it does work. What mm -hmm. doesn't work is making music together because there's always a delay. Mm, right. So can, yeah. Few, few seconds. Together. Yes. You're, you're, you're <laughs> never together. You're yes. Not. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Okay. This but still needs the, the physical course, presence. Yeah. Sorry? The needs, they will be so big. So when you, you better be ready. Mm -hmm. have a push line. Mm -hmm. so when it's over this yes. goal, we need some music you're right. together. Mm -hmm. You're right. We all we have a a big um, a lack of this physical mm -hmm. presence and mm -hmm. uh, the, the physical experience at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's true. Yeah, I think there will be a big need after after the mm -hmm. COVID uh, mm -hmm. yeah. time. Yeah. Right. And um, actually, I other than teaching in the dance department in my university, I'm also um, teaching in a program. It's called the Cultural Creative Industries uh, International Program where we have uh, international students from um, actually all over the world, Latin America, Europe, Asia, Southeast Asia, you know, to join us. And, um, and like in our, some of our courses, we talk about, you know, the importance of branding yourself, right? How you market yourself and like, you know, present to others so that uh, like Jerry Lee, you're saying you need investors to <laughs> have a startup, yeah? And actually, I saw it through your website. I um, didn't found any. Yeah. <laughs> it well, was my mom and dad. <laughs> and, but I had my boyfriend and then a little bit my mom and dad. <laughs> yes, but I was just going through your, um, your website, uh, even though it's in Danish. I saw something about investors, like real estate or something. Yes. You have these kind of, um, you know, non-artistic yes, exactly. <laughs> gatherings. Uh -huh. Yes. But that is what is very, uh, it's one event that we have at the moment and it's, it's very fun. It's about like, what are the trends and the needs? And at mm -hmm. the moment, like the events about, uh, mm -hmm. or how you say, yeah, investment action, I don't know in English, like where you put the money and where you, yeah, investment. Yeah, investment, yes. yes. So what do you say, much? Uh, stock. Stock, maybe you yes, invest exactly, in stock. Exactly. Yeah, uh -huh. those yeah. events are, for example, at the moment, so popular. Like we mm. have, like in different, for example, we have it where it's only ladies that come mm. and learn about it. And then they eat tapas. And we also mm -hmm. have another uh, workshop where it's more mm -hmm. like a workshop uh, arrangement. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. funny to see like that event is, or mm -hmm. that theme is very popular at the moment. Mm -hmm. Before COVID, it was not that much. Mm -hmm. But you know, mm -hmm. now people are yeah, starting to be more creative mm -hmm. with their thinking. And mm -hmm. so that is... Uh, that is one fun mm -hmm. uh, thing to see that uh, the interest in that is very big mm -hmm. at the moment. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's not money for me, no, no. <laughs> <Still> no. <laughs> right, right. But who knows? Maybe through coming to your cafe, some of these people interested in investing may try to, maybe. you know, invest in yours. <laughs> that would be ah, I should ah, oh, that is a good idea. Thank you. <laughs> They can start with me practice <laughs> yes yes <laughs> that is a good idea yeah but about the branding like it's mm -hmm. very uh about also what i mentioned about creating the trust yes what i did also because i went home to my hometown mm -hmm. i danced ballet as a young girl i did play music in the music school i did mm -hmm. work different places you know so all mm -hmm. my networking networking were there so mm -hmm. what i put out was also very much mm -hmm. the story about me mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. is for sure the easy way or an easy way to go mm -hmm. uh, because then you can get the personal yeah interaction and stuff um and it has a lot of so it's in branding wise that is easy mm -hmm. to put the story oh this girl coming back home from copenhagen mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes that it was a very good story and it did create a lot mm -hmm. of trust mm -hmm. like a mm -hmm. lot 
But on the long term also now, after a year, mm -hmm. it's very hard for me because I do also now have some employees, uh, employees and they do it very good. But also when people, they, they if I'm not there, you know, mm -hmm. it's very important that they still come and that the project, so mm -hmm. I can go more. I really want to, for example, create bigger projects and go uh, fundraising or change something like that is what I find very interesting to keep developing this project mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. then also if i'm not physical there like people because that what you know it was the they want to see you is. right at that, the as, at the that cafe is, like that is so you know because i cannot be there all the time but still branding wise it's very easy and good way to go about mm -hmm. creating this trust uh, because people can easier relate to a person than uh, they can yes. yeah so plus minus things of course yeah Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I found something very interesting that you said before, Julie, if I may I come back to that thought, because it uh, also it came up in my mind also with the, with the uh, fundraising and money issues, because you said that the, as long as you called it the Greek culture, yeah. people were coming in and it expected something for free. Yeah. And they as are if expected. culture is supposed to be free. And people are spoiled, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah it's interesting. Yeah, it's so interesting. So also like this, that we can only be employed if you make culture then about the fundraising or the, yeah, you know, that way. So people, they thought that this project was all paid by mm -hmm. the, yeah, the government or a fund or something. And I was like, no, this is my own money. I put in like a normal cafe, but it's mm -hmm. culture. People then said, <laughs> yes, and a company, you know, it's, you mm -hmm. don't ask. And a business, dentist, yes. Yes, and a business. You don't ask a dentist to do your teeth, but mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, oh my God. Exactly. Why is this so deep in, in our minds that culture should be free and non-commercial? Mm -hmm. Why mm -hmm. can it not be a business and cultural, a cultural mm -hmm. business, if you mm -hmm. will? Uh, oh, and I had the, I, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I had the, the, the same experience in a way with um, when I went down that road to, to creating this in what we call non-profit in German there's a different name for it but it's basically it, it all the rules are about it shouldn't be commercial in any way it should mm -hmm. be only cultural but not commercial mm -hmm. and and yeah and I came to the point where I realized that's not what I want I want to make my own thing and it should be also a business because I sh it should I should be able to live mm -hmm. from it in a way you know at some point mm -hmm. I, I want to do mm -hmm. this is my passion I want to do this but I also want to be able to live from that Mm -hmm. So why people shouldn't pay for it? Why it should be free, for example? It's yeah. the same thought behind it. And there's that's why that, I decided not to go down that way. Yeah. There's a that kind of uh, misconcept of artists being the poor artists, right? <laughs> have to starve and like then you'll have inspiration and <laughs> but that I do also I find think that's why, yeah, exactly. Sorry. Yeah, and very interesting, but also so important how we do like communicate ourselves. Like, mm -hmm. because if we also, like, put us under that or, like, uh, yes, also now I did say, okay, I don't want to apply for funds for, like, half a year or so because mm -hmm. now I need to go, like, this have to be, I have to show. Otherwise, mm -hmm. maybe the needs are not there. You know, mm -hmm. if I not can make it because also it's not nice that value, like, money, it's easier to value, you know, yeah, see how the value is, you know, of mm -hmm. course not. But still, for me, it's important that it also can stand mm -hmm. on its mm -hmm. own. But mm -hmm. oh my God. <laughs> but are you gonna, like, uh, you have to, like, the kids and the people that come to the place, they pay or how, how is it? Going yes, to yeah, work? yeah, there should be a fee for it. There will be. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not gonna be only kids, I hope. I mean, <laughs> I want to make it open really for, for all ages yeah. because um, there's, there's these youth orchestras and that's cool. But I want to make an orchestra space where you can come and just also play music if you work in whatever, in a big company and you have an instrument you like to play oh, you, or you want to experience that. Yeah, and, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and then also to try your own thing, when you make mm -hmm. your own project, conduct, mm -hmm. make mm -hmm. a concert or whatever, plan a mm -hmm. concert. Yeah. Really mm -hmm. a space where you, people from all ages can come and, and we create mm -hmm. things together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. And yeah, also, there should be a fee for it. Mm, yeah. Of course. But also what I see about the trends and, you know, that people are start to have more uh, trust and stuff in the not uh, 
uh, how you say, commune, like the government page stuff, like more private stuff for all kind of stuff. Uh, like like these private sectors are coming more up. Not saying that it, the other thing is good, but mm-hmm. also I just find it interesting that people are starting to learn that it can be like private like this or something mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I realize now I also looked up all kinds of ways where I can uh, apply for funding. And there are plenty, but most of them require you to be a certain form of organization or a certain uh, restricted only in age only for youth because that money is intended for youth um, empowerment or for youth education. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. But now since I decided to do it without certain organizational form, just my thing, um, I find it much harder to apply for funding. There's mm-hmm. not so many options. So I will mm-hmm. really need just to start on my own. And I, I, that's why I need to ch- charge money for it. Mm-hmm. But I offer something. I offer something for myself, something authentic. And yeah, we will, mm-hmm. I don't know where, it's, where it will head. That's why I called it also a workshop, a place for, that is open in its, in its direction in a way. Mm-hmm. You, you don't mm-hmm. really know yet what will come out of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think um, we have a program at a, our university on arts management. And I guess in a way they teach a lot of um, like accounting and maybe some related business models for artists and uh, performing arts companies. So I think it's also good to keep in mind. Like I remember one of our um, artistic directors, he was uh, reminding like the young generation who want to you know establish their own companies. They said, you should have at least three months of savings, you know, to operate for the company just in case something, you know, goes yeah. wrong. You can't like, you know, be bankrupt <laughs> within a yeah. short period of time. And so, yeah, so yeah. These are basic economical mm-hmm. um, um, things that you mm-hmm. you still, I, I believe you still don't learn as an artist when you go to mm-hmm. art school. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a good example that you told mm-hmm. us now that mm-hmm. uh, there's these programs, but mm-hmm. as far as I know here in Germany, mm-hmm. artists, don't learn nothing about that about business it's just not part of the studies it's just and this is a big uh, mm-hmm. it's lacking i mean it's certainly in the time when i studied i never mm-hmm. heard about all these things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it gives you also the, sorry. the economic way but also like the branding and also like you cannot both study music and be like a get to be a very good musician or a dancer and then also a good uh, branding person mm-hmm. but now oh my like the like what you should do like if you want to be yeah uh, have your profiles out there like what a tough job you know it must also yeah, be yeah you have you. to be both. As a musician you mm-hmm. have to be so it's so yeah. many like you have to be yeah have so many like different uh, yeah stuff mm-hmm. going on at the same time yeah now they call yeah, it but- a culturepreneur you have to have culture do culture but also be your own entrepreneur so it's a culturepreneur ah, <laughs> yeah. yes. but yeah. isn't that the reality for so many artists already that are not employed somewhere that really mm-hmm. they have to be entrepreneurs mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, and and why shouldn't it be teach it be taught in the in the, mm-hmm. in the art school mm-hmm, mm-hmm. exactly I mean, that should be an add-on to your workshop so people can come like that are yeah. artists and they can come mm. <laughs> I yeah, see. I mean, I have to learn it myself <laughs> at first, <laughs> yeah. but mm-hmm. totally, yes. Yeah. I, I also had the idea why we create mm-hmm. a show together or a concert, and then mm-hmm. we sell the concert, or we, we go mm-hmm. to a place, we rent mm-hmm. a place, and we make a, a mm-hmm. show, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. yeah, we charge money for it, and, and it's our like projects like that to, to try out, really. Yeah, you kind of have to have a few different business plans or operational plans, right? Like how you share profit yeah. with the members who join you and all these like yeah. rental fees and uh, you know ticket to uh, income and all that mm-hmm. it's yeah but, yeah, but i have a go ahead mars also still need to go to be like the artist like for more like the music and the mm-hmm. yeah no i mean like for me the, the split the, right <laughs> split yes, persona you have to be both but yeah. I think this is nowadays really the reality for so many people and it's becoming more and more that you cannot rely on mm-hmm. getting a job as mm-hmm. an artist. You have to create a job for yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to be exactly. your own um, uh, employer. You have to be self-employed in a way. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And of course, I mean, for me, the, the arts are still the driving force behind it. It's mm-hmm. the passion for, for the arts. Mm-hmm. 
really. Mm -hmm, of course, mm -hmm. this will not change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you have to learn the other side too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Or I want to, yeah, I want to. Uh -huh. Great. So um, actually, we have questions already coming in from our audience, which is great. But I suggest, uh, if you don't mind, maybe we take a five minute break now. Is that a good time to pause? And um, we yeah. can come back and Moritz, you can prepare for the answer to this question about collaborating with um, you know, people from different uh, disciplines and all that, yeah? Okay, okay, so we take a short break, five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. 關於這種所謂的斜槓人生或者是文化企業家這樣的一個概念。Okay, thank you. See you in 5 minutes.
Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, 好，希望大家还在。Okay. Um, so we have one question collected so far from our audience, Lin Yiting, and uh, Moritz. The question is. Um, how you communicate with artists from a different discipline when you collaborate with them, and do you have any um, tips or any uh, strategies or or recommendations to about communicating? Um, yeah, so <laughs> I can just uh, describe my my experience with it, and um, I think though that this is a very um, Personal, like mm -hmm. a very individual thing, question. So I think mm -hmm. things that work for me might not work for for everyone else. Mm -hmm. But so um, when I did uh, sound design for for dance pieces, for example, or for theater, mm -hmm. um, of course I was not the director of the piece or the choreographer. So mm -hmm. um, I found it important to uh, to really kind of take in the the artistic director's vision mm -hmm. and um, yeah try to bring your own take on that but then uh, during the cooperation mm -hmm. to always adjust to what the director's aim is really because it is um, mm -hmm. not in this case was not my piece mm -hmm. so i can um, in the best way i can contribute to the vision of the artistic direction mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I take my myself a little bit one step back and really try to um, to see through the eyes of the director and and, and, mm -hmm. and make it happen. You know, mm -hmm. of course you contribute some something of yourself as well in this, but um, I think the the conflict would arise or conflict mm -hmm. would arise the moment that I I take the place of the director and I think no, the music needs to be like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I don't work like that, or I, in, mm -hmm. in this case, I didn't because I really didn't see it as my vision. I just uh, tried to look through the eyes of the director. Um, so yeah, I didn't experience the serious conflict in this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In this cooperation so far, mm -hmm. but I, I understand it can happen easily, and mm -hmm. I try to in the in this uh, yeah. Situation that I described, uh, just to really like um, to yeah, take myself second and then really um, yeah. Um, there might be for some artists like things that are they they're not willing to do. For example, if they have very like strong opinion about certain artistic things, mm -hmm. and then uh, yeah, I think it can be a serious issue. Mm -hmm. But in the best case, I think when you cooperate in in different from different fields. You have a respect for each other, for each other's field. For example, my field was then the, the, the musical field, and then the music should serve the the piece. The music should is not that it's not a concert. It, it was a dance piece or a theater piece. So, uh, so the music is not the main thing. It should serve it. Yeah. So, I think this can avoid uh, conflicts by mm -hmm. yeah, looking what is really the what is it about. It's not about mm -hmm. the music. The music is the is, is a part of it uh, to make it a whole uh, experience for the audience, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not a concert. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then the co the communication. Another thing that uh, I remembered now, for example, working with uh, Adi on our second project. It was her piece in Vancouver that she talked about also. In her right, talk. right about the homeless. Um, yeah. Yeah, and this kind of. Uh, when she was in Vancouver. So we started working on that. Hello? Hello? Is it? Uh, I think you were, you broke off a little bit. Can you repeat or rewind? <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Do you hear me now? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, you're talking about the with... Vancouver piece, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So we started working on that um, apart from each other because Adi is living in Israel and I was living in, in, in Germany at that time. 
So we, um, she would send me material that she created, dance material. And then I would try to send her stuff, uh, music. And then we pretty quickly realized it's not working good for us because we need to really sit together and work together also on the music. Like uh, I need her, her, her mm -hmm. input and to, to, to make the music in a way that works for her. And um, so, yeah, so eventually I, I had to fly to Israel and, and for, for a week or two, I remember. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, to really sit with her and that, to really mm -hmm. make it work. Like, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, it, but that's, I think, a very uh, individual thing that for other people. If they know each other well, maybe it works perfectly fine that somebody somewhere else in the world has been creating music that's just perfect for, for a certain director or choreographer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, um, we have another question now for Julia about the problems you ran into by calling your Café de Goose culture. <laughs> this is from Martin. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh -huh. So when I was living in Copenhagen, I did see like a lot of, again, different concepts that did call themselves something about culture. Mm -hmm. So I, when I went back home, I thought, well, there's no <laughs> problem about calling this culture because that is what I do it's what I find the the most important thing mm -hmm. uh, what the cafe is about mm -hmm. um, but then I think like in this in Horsens because of the history of the like the town maybe it's just their culture that is more because there are not that many people creating stuff like this or making art at the streets or do something so mm -hmm because the environment for that is not so big so all the citizens they are used to stuff like this like being paid or being like uh, people that are maybe like a nice dance group that then are visiting the city or like uh, how you say like friend cities like uh, so you are oh you're like sister like, sister cities yes. yeah mm -hmm. yes you know so it's mm -hmm. always like a collaboration and mm -hmm. then yeah paid by someone you know so it's more what i think that you can call it culture like the word for example mm -hmm. in Copenhagen, i did not see any problems like this mm -hmm. but i think it's just like the culture in in, uh, in maybe in smaller uh, towns mm -hmm. um, because i did sense the okay so the vibe was like this uh, yeah, I am a little young, I know, but that is, is just about uh, yeah, saving the whole world. And I find, yes, I like to do that, but I cannot take, you know, it's, they put too much like uh, big feelings and the values were too, too big uh, when it was culture. And they thought, okay, she cannot do that by herself. So of course it's paid by someone mm. else. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did that help? Or did I, I hope that I did confuse you uh, even more because it is a confusing thing. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, I was in Copenhagen last summer and there were so many cafes and we were actually in one of a very nice cafe uh, talking to one of the professors from Denmark, you know, and it kind of was like a working space. We had a meeting there and then, of course, there was really, very delicious uh, drinks and uh, snacks. And the environment was also very nice. They had like artworks on the walls and, you know, and also some crafts, handicrafts on sale. So I could imagine that kind of an atmosphere worked very well in the, like a more cosmopolitan cities. Also in Taipei, we have these similar ones. But now I think it's great that more and more young people like yourself, you choose to go back to your hometowns and um, bring these concepts there but of course like you said um, it may not transform exactly right people may not be used to those uh, ideas and you need to adapt along the way mm -hmm. and so I think it's it's great that you're trying and you have this uh, courage I to <laughs> push but it's also yes for example, the, the culture I think but also we do also meet a lot of the people that come to our cafes mm -hmm. maybe have like a how should I say it? like uh, personal problems or people that I you know maybe don't have a job and it's I have uh, you know times in my life that I did not have a job but you know people that are kind oh. of like 
searching uh, more attention or something like that. And I, we are like a place that want to be open and create stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's also mm-hmm. very interesting for me to see that, wow, mm-hmm. you just have to go a bit this direction mm-hmm. and then it attests like a certain group of, of people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's made me sad, you know, because mm-hmm. it's like, okay, you just have to a little say that we open and boom, you know, it's, uh, mm-hmm. that is also mm-hmm. a thing that I did um, meet a lot. And a lot of good stuff in that as well, but also, uh, yeah, <laughs> a note to it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. can can be limiting also. No? Yes. When people have all kinds of connotations to something yes. already, so they imagine something, and then it, it might be totally different. That's mm-hmm. a good yes, a good way to put it. Much also because we want to be like this open, uh, warm place, and want to be how you say mindful, mm-hmm. like when you when you are open for all kind of very also, welcoming yeah yes mm-hmm. but also that you can also become so welcoming that you are closing for some other group you know some target mm-hmm. group so so yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's hard to find a I balance think, uh, Gruß, yeah uh, i think Gruß is a good name now Gruß, because it's so unspecific you know? mm. Mm, that is true yeah yeah yes and you're saying it's kind of like a because gravel you you don't pay much attention to it but it's actually very important for to lay foundations so like we use it to in the road pavements and all that right so yeah. i, I kind of get your idea which is great <laughs> cool so um we still have some time would do you still have questions for each other or or we yeah. encourage our audiences to be brave and <laughs> share your ideas or just even give feedback yeah so, Morris, you, you wanted to ask something. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask Julie um, uh, more about the coaches. Uh, Julie, you mentioned that you have a lot of coaches coming to your cafe at the moment. Yes. And I wonder what they use the cafe for, what they, how they use your platform. Yes. Your place. Yeah. For example, there is like this week, uh, we have two events. One of them, which, co- you know, we have more, but uh, with the coaches, one of them is where about this like uh, people becoming more like the private sector so actually mm-hmm. this is like uh, or how in english when you are giving birth and there's this lady taking care of your child in the first oh. like, so you have one yes yeah, so she is instead of it being with the hospital then she made like her own private oh. thing for that mm-hmm. so she will come and then uh, like newborn babies and moms they can come mm-hmm. and then she will you know guide them and talk mm-hmm. with them and all that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um that is one of them mm-hmm. and another one is like a walk and talk so there's like mm-hmm. this coach she is very uh, into like how you oh my english again like the vena like what you do like okay i think i cannot eat sugar but maybe you are allowed to eat sugar and like like how you think about your life and then they go around and then come back to the cafe and and sit there and talk so yeah so like but it's not like this or... huh it's like the, these, uh, is it psychosomatic? I mean, that's in, in German, a word that- You I mean would... more about nutrition, diets? Yes. And li- yeah. Lifestyle, lifestyle like, yeah. coaches, lifestyle, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So that was, uh, yeah, two examples that is going on this uh, mm-hmm. week. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, but I think also- the, because... They come to your cafe and present their topic? Yes, and their then, topic. then it, yeah. Can we do this? And I say, yeah. And but yeah, coaches do that a lot. But also like all, for example, there is this uh, flower. Uh, she has like a shop in her car with flowers, and she was like, Julie, can I come and make like a flower workshop? Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, so it's not only coaches, but uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. So. Um... Okay, anything else coming from our friends online? <laughs> um, actually, there are a lot of like, I was thinking of, you know, these small independent bookstores that also run a cafe on the side. So people, people could come in and browse through the books and magazines and also sit and have some food or chat or it kind of makes them stay longer in the bookstores. And in fact, uh, there was a first sort of a 24-hour bookstore in Taipei, and it was very popular because people would like to 
have some place to go in the evening other than you know maybe <laughs> a nightclub or something. So I just wonder about your opening hours because you said today Sunday you're closed, right? So. And that is also a thing about being uh, younger and uh, bringing something new to the to to a smaller town because uh, the cafe is uh, located in like a place with a lot of uh, yeah apartments. So mm -hmm. and they are run mm -hmm. by a guy that rent them. So they have to uh, decide or they they can say that I cannot are allowed to be open more than mm -hmm. uh, seven o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. So that is quite early, but. Uh, when they heard about this uh, younger girl want to create culture, they said, mm -hmm. okay, closing at seven. <laughs> so uh, that is what I have to uh, handle at the moment. But mm -hmm. uh, we are also talking with um, something, maybe we're gonna get our second place. So mm -hmm. uh, where we can have more open for a longer time. I see. But that is I just see. how it is. Yeah. Okay. But well, I like- A step at a time. <laughs> that's how it is. But more, it's also you like at the moment you are com do you feel that you are combining like all the stuff that you have done in your previous like musician life or is there some stuff that you would like to add on you know that is our uh, big gift about uh, deciding so much on our own is there a thing or do yeah you um well with this project that I I um, starting at the moment with this orchestra space i uh, it's not combining everything i did because i did a very yeah a lot of different things and i played also in very different bands and different kinds of music a lot in, in, in jazz bands or in, in blues rock and then i uh, sound design is a whole different field again where you mainly work on the computer <laughs> and yeah so this orchestra is, should be about really um unplugged sort of classical music. It doesn't have to be only classical, but played by classical instruments. I mean, this is like uh, acoustic instruments, not electronic mainly. And uh, that's not combining everything. It's just where, let's say that my biggest passion in music lies. Mm -hmm. It's the power mm -hmm. that you can create from, from an in an orchestra in this, mm -hmm. with this kind of instruments and that kind of music, the, the great compositions that we have. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also, for example, I'm looking forward a lot if we take a, a pop song or so, a song that we really like that's running on the radio and we arrange it for our instruments that can be mm -hmm. great fun too, to really play a totally different music, but with this old set of instruments from, from the classical repertoire, um, we'll see where, where it's going. I don't know, but now this is, I don't think this is the everything and 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 the last thing i do is just uh, yeah. it's where my biggest passion at the moment is and then you mm -hmm. kind of put like create a space so people can get their own like sense of uh, responsibility for it also to grow and they have the space so you don't have the yes you have kind of the frame but then also it's i think i can feel that it's also very important for you that that people yeah. find their own yeah, their own space. That would be wonderful. Yeah, totally, exactly. This is um, really um, one of my main hopes also that it becomes really a sort of a platform like your cafe, you know, where people come and they try their own thing and they realize, oh, wow, I can be a leader too of my own mm -hmm. project and it's fun mm -hmm. and uh, and it affects people and it, it brings two people together. Mm -hmm. um, and then they come with a totally different energy than when they come to a, a weekly rehearsal of an orchestra that maybe they, they, their parents send them to or mm -hmm. that their school is offering. Mm -hmm. Because what I experience in school a lot is that um, because it's such a, a strict system that we impose on, on our kids, mm -hmm. of course, school is important, but it's very strict and it has very strict boundaries and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, structures that I experience as a teacher on the teacher side, a lot of, um, how do you say, the kids, Everything, every new thing I bring, every new piece of music, I, I feel, I sense a lot of, um, uh, how do you call it in English? Like, at first, the kids are against it. At first. Resist, resistance? Resistance, exactly. Thank you. That, that was the word. Uh, there's a lot of resistance with everything. Mm -hmm. And you need to, you know, kind of make them try it out. You motivate them. 
And of course, there's all kinds of tricks for teachers to do that. But uh, if it works in the end, they realize how beautiful it is to, to play together music or to sing mm -hmm. together or to do. Mm -hmm. And then they really like it. But mm -hmm. this resistance that you face in school, mm -hmm. I think, is a result of the, of the rigid structure of, of the school, everyday mm -hmm. school life, which is mm -hmm. really starting at the same time, having these 45 minute classes, having mm -hmm. these special subjects that are mm -hmm. chosen by people that are not the kids and uh, being imposed by them. And I think that mm -hmm. creates a lot of resistance. And, but when mm -hmm. you, you can try out something on your own, mm -hmm. your own idea, and you, uh, then you have a total, there's a different energy behind it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, yeah, because um, sometimes, especially uh, younger, um, I guess, teenagers, right? You're because you teach in the high school, they are still going through, you know, <laughs> some period of um, growing into adulthood and all this needs a lot of encouragement. And so, or even peer pressure and all these. <laughs> so sometimes I think you're, you know, you're right in that stepping out of the confines of the educational system like you know um the rigid yeah. more rigid uh, so-called you know school system give them more freedom perhaps to explore on their exactly, own exactly because mm -hmm. yeah everything that school offers is still connotated with school mm -hmm. um, for the kids and that itself uh, in itself is, is a problem sometimes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i'm not against school i i, I, mm -hmm. I think school is very important but mm -hmm. yeah there's this thing that uh, Mm -hmm. It has a lot of a very you know, a lot of things that are being imposed on the kids and they feel. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think even nowadays more than in old times, but they, there's more and more resistance towards this rigid structure. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, you see it also that in the schools, there's a certain mm -hmm. percentage of kids that are mm -hmm. failing mm -hmm. because they don't fit into this rigid system. It's not mm -hmm. for them, not good for mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. But uh, I must say that also in university, I feel mm -hmm. uh, I feel a similar problem. It's mm -hmm. not it it shows differently. But I I had uh, for many years being a student, mm -hmm. I kind of tried very much to fulfill the um, the the the, uh, the mm -hmm. task that I was given mm -hmm. in the classes, mm -hmm. and I wasn't like resisting it at all because it was something I wanted to learn but still mm -hmm. the, the the classes are still very restricted it's not your mm -hmm. own curriculum you don't choose mm -hmm. your own curriculum as a student either it's uh, you mm -hmm. want this degree so you have to fulfill this and this and this mm -hmm. and, this. Mm -hmm. and um, also that is very limiting already and takes out some of the energy that you might have when you go to university and you say you I want to study music mm -hmm. or I want to study art mm -hmm. um, this is still your choice, but then you mm -hmm. see the curriculum and that's not your choice anymore. <laughs> and already there, uh, something happens that it's kind of taken, being taken away from you to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And and for me, that was a very important realization after being a student for many years mm -hmm. that I kind, of, I kind of lost my own path in a way mm -hmm. because I just tried to fulfill the task that was given to me in class. Mm -hmm. And uh, by doing that, I, I forgot my own um, my own passion that brought me to the to the subject, to the music, mm -hmm. in the first place. Mm -hmm. I think this can happen too in universities. Yes, similarly. So, also, yeah, yeah. So I think also in the in the adulthood, it's very important mm -hmm. to to be able to really try out your own ideas and, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. create from yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, but um, hopefully uh, they can find more encouragement or courage to step out of the norm and, you know, find their own dreams artistically and otherwise. So um, yeah. I think our time is close to running out of the, the 90 minutes uh, or so. Are, is there any last minute comments or you, any final words you'd like to share to our audience? Moritz and Julia? <laughs> no? All good? Well, I think what I just said was, was for, for me, it was served well as a. As a serves well, yes. 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 Thank you so much. <laughs>
So um, I just need to say a few words of thanks, uh, maybe in Chinese also, because this is the last of our eight sessions this month. Quite amazingly, the four weeks went by very quickly with two sessions, you know, each week, Fridays and Sundays. And um, so we need to thank our, um, the, uh, it's called the Kong Zhong, okay, Kong Zhong Taiwan Dangdai Wenhua Xian Changzuo, or C Lab in Taiwan, for um, funding this project internationally, as well as our own uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Zhonghua Mingguo Wai Jiao Bu, the Zan Zhu, and all our friends for coming online to join our conversations. And um, for your information, these uh, videos will be online till end of December. 在八场的这个影片呢,会继续留在社团里面到十二月底. And then in January, um, we'll transfer these, also the um, text, into the MIT website, the MIT Dance Company. And so we hope you can follow us also uh, with the Instagram and Facebook pages. 所以大家可以在到时候一月的这些资料会传到这个MIT的网站。那希望大家可以继续关注追踪舞团的脸书跟Instagram,然后掌握这些进一步的消息. So um, I really um, learn a lot from all of you, and uh, thank you so much for joining. I hope we keep in touch, and um, all the best with your um, business, your <laughs> dream projects, and um, your careers. And I hope everyone be safe, and with all the COVID um, situation. Okay, take care. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Yachin. Thank you, Julie. Thank you so much. Okay, everyone, I'm Lin Yachin. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.